Hi, Year 11. Welcome back to uh, McGrath Thematics for your next lesson starting our next topic. We're going to start off today's lesson with a couple of flashback questions from the 2007 HSC exam paper. These are all worth two marks each. I want you to pause the video and see if you can remember how we answer these three questions. Okay, so starting off with the first one, to rationalize, we are going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, which is uh, root 3 plus 1. So on top, we get root 3 plus 1. On the bottom, we use the difference of two squares shortcut to do root 3 squared, take away 1 squared. And that turns into a 2 on the bottom for your final answer. For the next one, to factorize with a number in front of the x squared, we've got to use our sneaky method where we multiply the 2 to the minus 12 to make it a minus 24. We set up our brackets and our fraction, and we think of two numbers that are going to add to give 5 and they're going to multiply to give minus 24. We get 8 and negative 3, and now we can factor a 2 out of this front bracket, and we can cancel off the 2 on the bottom and have our fully factorized answer. Or if you did the cross method and got the same answer, I'm happy for you, but you're wrong. And for the third one, we're finding the equation of a line passing through this point, which is perpendicular to this line here. So first thing we should do is we should find the gradient of this line so we can find out the gradient that is perpendicular to that line. So we'll rearrange this to have y equals minus 2x minus 4. So this line has a gradient of minus 2, which means the perpendicular gradient to that will be reciprocaled and change the sign. So minus 2 turns into positive 1 half. That gets you one mark. Now we use our point gradient formula. We have a gradient, we have a point from the question, and so we'll sub in our values, and now we'll just tidy it up a bit. So I'm going to multiply the two across. I'm going to turn the minus minus into a plus. And now rearrange and make y the subject. You get some gross fractions, or if you want it to look beautiful like I do, you can leave your answer in general form, which is objectively much better. Okay, so the new topic we are starting today is called exponential and logarithmic functions. I'm not going to lie to you, it is a pretty challenging chapter. I definitely found this really difficult when I was in um, senior maths, but um, hopefully I can help you guys out. We're going to start off today by just looking at what exponential functions are, just by doing a bit of sketching. So you may have done a little bit of this in year 10, but it might be a bit um, rusty, I suppose. So we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to start by looking at what the function 2 to the power of x looks like. All right, this is called an exponential function because our, our variable, the x, is in the exponent. So as always, if you're not ever not uh, super sure what a curve looks like, you should draw up a couple of uh, values in a table to get some coordinates to plot onto our axis. So I want you to pause the video and substitute these six values into this equation to get six answers for y. Okay, assuming you did that and you did it correctly, you're going to have numbers that look like this. So we've got 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. And then we have negative powers turning us into fractions. So 2 to the minus 1 is 1 over 2 to the 1. So hopefully what you're seeing is that as we move towards the right, each time the number is doubling because we are multiplying it by 2. Every time you move to the left, we are halving the number. So if we plot these points on and draw up a line, it's going to look something like this. And this is called an exponential curve which since you guys have been living in COVID for the last 24 months, you probably already know what that looks like. But there we go, there is our exponential function. We are now going to look at a few uh, common transformations of this curve that we're going to be using in this course. So now that we know what 2 to the x looks like, looks like that, we are going to sketch negative 2 to the x, we're going to sketch 2 to the negative x, and then we're going to sketch 2 to the x plus 1. So before we do that, um, I fully encourage you to open Desmos now if you've got a computer handy. And I want you to put in to the power of x and you should see this shape. I want you to play around with the base and so maybe make it a two, oh sorry, maybe make it like a five or a 0 0.5. See what that does to your picture. Change your value of x, maybe make it a two x or a half x. Just see what changing the input of your equation does to the output of your picture to get you a bit of a better understanding of what's happening here. All right, so hopefully you remember from the further functions topic that when we take a function and we multiply it by a negative, it flips it across the x-axis, so it flips vertically. So if 2 to the x looks like this, 
2 to the minus x, sorry, negative 2 to the x, it's just going to be the same thing but flipped upside down across the x-axis. Now some of you might also remember what happens when we change the input from x to negative x. So in the earlier topics we compared the graphs of f of x to the graphs of f of negative x. What you may remember is what happened to the picture is it flipped uh, oh, sorry, vertically, no sorry, flipping horizontally across the y-axis, so right to left. So if 2 to the x is going to look like this, 2 to the negative x is going to turn around and go the other way. So it should look something like this. And now for the last one, if we take 2 to the power of x and we plus 1 to it, it's going to increase all the y values by 1, so it's going to shift our curve up by 1 unit to look like this. So now previously we had an asymptote of the x-axis. We were never, ever, ever going to cross or touch the x-axis because you can't do 2 to the power of something and the answer be 0. It just doesn't work. Now our asymptote has been shifted up by one unit, so it's now at x equals 1. If anybody needs help um, spelling asymptote, you can uh, email my good friend Keegan. He'll be able to help you out, I'm pretty sure. All right, one last quick example, just to get a bit more comfortable with working with these functions. Uh, we have f of x and g of x are my two functions. g of x is just a linear function and f of x is an exponential function. Okay, first question, which is probably the toughest part, is state the domain and range of f of x. So tell me the x and y values where this function exists. Now, as I've said previously, when we've done domain and range, range questions, these questions can be solved very, very simply if you have an understanding of what the graph looks like, because that's what they're assessing, really. Do you know what this graph looks like? Where is it going? So we're going to build up 5 to the negative x plus 1 using the transformations we just looked at in the previous slide. So we're going to start with 5 to the power of x. The shape is going to be similar to 2 to the power of x, but because it's 5 to the power of x, it's going to be a bit steeper, but this one's not drawn to scale. Okay, so 5 to the x and 2 to the x have the same basic shape, they still pass through 1 on the uh, y-axis because 5 to the power of 0 is still 1. All right, now we're going to say to ourselves, well, 5 to the negative x is going to be the same shape, but like we saw, when you change the input to a negative value, it's going to reflect your curve across the y-axis, so it turns back around. Now we're going to take the shape and we're going to increase it by 1, and there we have the rough shape of f to the negative x plus 1. Alright, so domain, x values, where is this thing going left and right? Well, to the right, it's never stopping, and to the left, it's never stopping. There is not an x value that you can't chuck into this equation. Alright, all x values are going to work, and so the domain is everywhere. Now, for the range, which is the y values, we can see that we're obviously going up to infinity in terms of the positive scene, uh, but we are never ever crossing this asymptote at x equals, oh, sorry, at y equals 1. So our domain is going to be from 1 up to infinity. We're not going to include infinity, and we're also not going to include 1 because we are approaching this dotted line. We are never actually touching it. So there is our range from 1 to infinity, not including either. All right, for the next part of the question, we are solving f of x equal to 2. So we are trying to see where is this equation equal to a value of 2. So we are solving this. Alright, so it's not super spooky. We can subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, and so we get 5 to the minus x equals 1. And now we have to do a bit of thinking. We've got 5 to the something, and the answer is 1. 5 to the power of what gets you an answer of 1? If you're good with your indices, you might be screaming at the computer screen right now. The answer is 0, and you are correct. 5 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, which means a negative x must be 0. So if negative x is 0, that means that positive x is also 0, and that's your answer. When x is equal to 0, we have a y value of 2, which we actually saw from our graph before. When x is 0, y is equal to 2. So it all works. Yay! All right, for the next part of the question, we are trying to find the function of g of x. So we're taking our exponential function. We're going to change the input from x to g of x, which is actually 3x. So f of x is right here. We're going to change that to f of 3x. So all that does is it changes the power of the 5. Instead of a negative x, it's going to be a negative 3x. And that's your answer. That's all we've got to do. Just chucking one function into the other. 
And for the final question, we have find uh, the function g evaluated at f evaluated at one. So we are going to find the value of f1 from this function here. We're going to sub that answer into g. So again, not super challenging. We're just going to make the x values in the function here equal to one. And now five to the minus one is going to be one fifth. And one fifth plus one is six fifths. That's our answer for f of one. We're going to substitute that into g and it's going to look like this. So instead of g of x, we're doing g of 6 fifths. So we're doing 3 times 6 fifths. So we get an answer of 18 fifths. All right, lovely. That's actually going to do it for today. It's a pretty quick one to start off the topic, but as we move uh, further through the chapter, the lessons will be a bit longer and a bit tougher. So have a go at these practice questions for me, upload them to the assignments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much uh, if you watch this. Catch you later.